Hey, how you doing? We are uh, continuing our study of the book of Luke. And last time we just did a little intro. Now we get into some of the things that, that uh, are, are part of just the history of what happened. So now it is the birth of John the Baptist foretold. So Luke chapter 1, 5 through 25. In the time of Herod, king of Judah, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were upright in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commandments and regulations blamelessly. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well along in years. Once, when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zech an angel of the Lord, I don't know if I said the angel, anyway. Don't want to make that mistake. Verse 12. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to give him the name John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from birth. Many of the people of Israel will he bring back to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, How can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel answered, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. So, we have Elizabeth and Zechariah, the parents of John the Baptist. And this is the story of his birth. Uh, Elizabeth is very happy uh, in their culture. Not having children was a problem. And so she is very happy that the Lord has taken away her disgrace. And uh, just kind of an amazing story here. Uh, you've got um, Zechariah not being able to speak, you know, like, and this was for a long time. This wasn't just like for a few weeks. You know, he was serving at the temple that time of service. I'm not sure how long that lasted, but it continued on after he was uh, struck mute by Gabriel, Gabriel, the angel. And then, you know, he went home, his wife got pregnant, then there was the whole pregnancy. And when the birth of the child happened was when he was able to speak. So this is, I mean, we're looking at a year. I don't know. It was a long time. He was unable to speak. Uh, and that kind of, I think, ties into verse six here a little bit. Both of them, speaking of Elizabeth and Zechariah, both of them were upright in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commandments and regulations blamelessly. So how do we read that? So, um, you know, is it all have fallen short, uh, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, uh, except for <laughs> Zechariah and Elizabeth? Uh, no, I don't think that's how you read this. What this means is that they were, they were good, upstanding people who did the right thing. You know, obviously, Zechariah has a problem with faith because he didn't trust Gabriel, who showed up, you know, like, um, imagine it, you're, you're in the temple and an angel starts talking to you and then you're like, yeah, but how do I know this is actually going to happen? 
because you're talking to an angel. You're talking to Gabriel. You know, like, what? Um, anyway, so then he struck mute. So there's obviously he, he doesn't have this Christ-like perfection, but he is described as uh, upright in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commandments and regulations blamelessly. So, you know, good people. Abra uh, Gabe, Zechariah and Elizabeth, good people. So, um, awesome story. We'll continue on uh, with, with this here as we continue in the book of Luke. But I think the lesson for today is take God at his word. You know, Zechariah is talking to Gabriel <laughs> and is like, yeah, you're going to have to give me more than just your presence here. You know, like you're going to have to tell me how I'm going to know this is actually going to happen. Uh, and I think he was also in happy disbelief. Like, really? H how do I know this is going to happen? Not just, you know, uh, being snarky, but, uh, but what a blessing to just take God at his word. You know, to not have to go through the things that you go through when you don't take God at his word. So let's pray along those lines uh, today. So Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, that when we trust you, we put our faith in you, that you lift us up. And Lord, help us to take you at your word right away. As we go through your scriptures, as we pray, and Lord, as you speak to our hearts, Lord, I pray we would take you at your word and and walk in obedience immediately, not questioning, not uh, you know, obviously we want to evaluate whether or not we've heard from you. We want to read the scriptures diligently and try to understand what they mean so we can put them into practice properly. But Lord, once we know, Lord, help us to walk uh, in faith, trusting in you right away. Bless us with this. In Jesus' name, amen.